March field trip of the dry dredgers. Those are huge cliffs. Oh, this water trickling down. Very peaceful. There's at least three tiers from the road on this side. Team's anxious for me to get going, catch up with him, and get started. Cindy, and I'm delighted. I've just found my first trial of bike. That's whole. It's a oh. little flexy. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh my gosh. There's my finger for scale. So that's maybe inch and a quarter. It's a really nice one. Seems good. And it was just kind of laying there. Oh, that's fantastic. Here's a close-up of uh, an unusual bryzoan. Notice the uh, diamond-like patterns. We think this is the blade-shaped type of bryzoan. And here's a close-up of it. It looks like the tip's broken off. Yeah. Here's a rock with a lot of trace fossils in it. Yeah, there's a lot of trace fossils right in this area. This one has a lot of bryzoans. Various sizes. I'm up on the third tier. And uh, lots of running water. I'm keeping way down there. Owen, and what did you find here? I found... Big cephalopod. Okay, I'd say that's about, well, what would that be, nine inches or so? And we put it together best we could. And that is a good find. We found an unusual player here right above Keaton's head. And it's, oh, what was maybe two feet thick. Unusual about it is just okay. It uh, it bows, so it comes like this, like this, like that, and look at the layers on it. Look at the bands. I'm not certain what that is. The electrolytes was talking about underwater landslide, so this might be what that is. But I have to tell you. I have 11 inch cephalopod, 11 inch visible, it would have been longer in real life. And the cliffs here have a, little, have a lot of fossils, and right here along the edge there's a, the remnants of some uh, bryzoan reefs. I'm going to get some close-ups here, what looks like rubbly, what looks like rubbly rocks. 
all these are bryozoans. And there's bryozoans are similar to coral, but it's a different species. Trilobite. And they're smaller. They're here and they're all the way along this edge. So this plateau where I'm standing, there's a lot of bryozoans going. These are uh, rather thin, small fragments of bryozoan. And this is called constellary because the surface looks like uh, stars. This is wet, it's not showing up very well. There we go, now you can see the star pattern. Here's some of the other fragments. Put it on back. Here's another patch. Okay, I started filming up here by that blue bin. This uh, I've walked about, I don't know, 50 feet. And uh, here's a continu continuation of that bryozoan reef. All these individual pieces, if you were painstakingly patient, you could glue these pieces back together and see the uh, forms that they uh, took. You're a fragment of Bryzone Reef. As a matter of fact, this is a really nice one. This is a big, thick chunk of the Constellaria. Here, these two are okay these uh, in the soil in the clay they are broken by the pressure of the earth themselves most of these do not go much more than say an inch and a half in length and the pressure of the earth the sediment on top of them has broken them like China but all the broken pieces are here and here's one slightly articulated I found a slab that has uh, <clears throat> some cryodoids on it, and there's actually quite a few. It's very subtle, but there are several calyxes here. Um, I started off the first one that I noticed was the most obvious. This stem piece, and here's very subtle calyx here. Some of the arms. Here's another piece of one. And this is the one that caught my eye first because of the color contrast. There's another one here. This is interesting how the stems are all wrapped around something. Here's another cephalopod, and I'm guessing it's about old. Another maybe nine inches or so. Hollow depression. We were walking along the bottom and there's a wonderful concentration of uh, brachiopods here. I just want to show you what this looks like. Look at all the seashells. Now these are a little bit squished. A little bit rough. A lot of seashells there. Amazing concentration. I like that. They're not real clean there, a little bit battered. Here's some of the loose ones, and you can see how tattered some of them are compared to uh, clean ones from other locations. These are shingled. That means they're one on top of another. This is a storm event, a sea storm, a hurricane force ways of uh, piled these together. They slid down a slope and they're all compacted like uh, Pringles out of a Pringles can, so to speak. Uh, Dick Ackerman. And we found a wonderful mold. It's the underside of the uh, isotelus, and I guess that's about oh, four inches, four and a half inches, five almost. Fantastic. So this is the underside of the, uh, the, the shell, and you can see the eye sockets here. Yeah. And uh, so upside down. Just like looking at a cereal bowl, more or less. Yeah. And uh, this is Isotelus, the Ohio State fossil. 
and it's got a very pointy end so it's not hmm, maybe gigas I'm not certain but uh, Okay. Big cephalopod in Philip Grissom.